This happened about 10 years ago. I was 22 at the time and had to have knee surgery to clear out shredded cartilage about a week after my birthday. This story takes place three days after the surgery. My mom, a nurse important for later, my husband, BF, of two years at the time, and my best friend decided to take me shopping to try to get my mind off the surgery and to pick up craft supplies so I would be bored while off of work. I should mention it was an orthopedic surgery, so I didn't need to use crutches if I didn't feel the need and should be walking some. When we got to the craft store, not our first stop, my husband and best friend made me use one of the store's wheelchair. I was being stubborn because I could still walk just not very fast or as long without brakes, since I really didn't want to be in the chair husband and friend decided to make a game out of it. Like, who could push me the fastest? Now, you might think we are wrong, but let me state this was in the middle of the day on a Monday, so the store was not busy and my husband and best friend would check the aisle to make sure that the coast was clear. After one of the speeding events, I was looking at something in an aisle and my mom pulled husband and best friend away to look at something. It was something she thought I would like and was going to get it as a surprise. Well, I decided I didn't want whatever it was that I was looking at and stood up to put it back. This is when Karen appears berating me for using the wheelchair as a toy and how there are people who actually need it. I am calming, explain. I just had surgery and that is why I am using it. She then goes on and on about how she saw what my friends were doing and that I am obviously lying. I explained that they were trying to make me feel better and I would tell them to push me normally from now on. This did not appease Karen and she is still berating me. At this point... I roll up my pant leg and show her the compression bandages I am still wearing. She goes on about how that means nothing, and I could have just wrapped my knee as an excuse in case we were caught, and she bet the other people with me also have their knees wrapped. My group returns at this point and says the same thing as me. Karen is still not having it, and we are all lying. I look at my mom and ask if I can take off my bandages as they were supposed to be removed the next day. She says I really shouldn't, but she could rewrap it for me if needed. At this point, I take off the bandages before anyone can stop me showing Karen my knee in all its post-surgery glory. It was bruised, swollen, and crusty at the incision sites, and you still see the iodine on my skin. Karen's face goes white, and she looks like she is going to be sick. She starts stammering about how I didn't need to go that far. As my mom is re-wrapping my knee, scolding me and Karen under her breath, I look at Karen and say, What else did you want me to do? I told you. They told you. I showed you the bandages you wouldn't get off your high horse and insisted we were lying. At this point, a staff member comes to check if we need any help and Karen runs for the door. We had a pleasant rest of our day and stopped for ice cream on the way home. Edit. Changed pickup craft supplies so I would be bored while off of work to wouldn't be bored, along with other typos. Notes to self. Don't try to write a post at first thing after waking up. Edit. To clarification. We were not running, drifting around corners, using the brakes while moving, doing wheelies, having more than one person in the chair. We were speed walking with clear aisles, seeing how far I would go with one push from a dead stop. We were still very careful with wheelchair. First, a little backstory. I am a college student and cycle to campus every day. It's not a long ride at all, but I have to go through a zone where it's illegal to ride a bicycle on the sidewalk, so I'm forced to ride on the road. Most drivers don't care and just go around me since I stay to the edge and don't make myself a nuisance. Also, I have a baddie bike that I commute on. This will be important later. A few weeks ago, a guy in a Ford SUV, I don't know exactly which kind, started yelling at me as he drove by while I was in the road. Only zone. All the usual get off the road. Roads are for cars. You're too slow kind of stuff. I get that from drivers on a weekly basis. I just ignore and keep going. This man was special, though, since he cut right in front of me and slammed on his brakes after yelling. I was able to stop before I hit him. And he floored it out of there, yelling, better be careful next time, bike. I was pretty mad, but I didn't get his license plate or anything, and I doubt anything could be done about it anyway. There was no real proof. Over lunch, I told one of my friends who works as an EMT the story, and he got seriously angry. 
Apparently, he has seen the results of a car successfully brake-checking on a cyclist, and they aren't pretty. Two days later, the same Ford SUV jerk tried to brake, Check me again. I was expecting it as soon as I heard him yelling, Get on the sidewalk, bike, from behind, so I avoided a crash again. I told my EMT friend over lunch again, and he was even madder than before. I wanted to let it go since I can't really do anything about him and my bicycle isn't going to win in a crash. This guy keeps trying to break check me every few days during my morning commute whenever we're on the same patch of road at the same time. About a week ago, my EMT friend told me that he told my story to one of his friends in the campus police who was equally angry. The two of them wanted to catch this jerk driver. The plan was to have the policeman parked on the side of the road in hopes of catching and pulling over the jerk. I heartily agreed, and the officer pulled some strings and had himself posted on speeder catching duty for that stretch of road. A few days passed uneventfully, with no sign of the road rager. I saw the cop parked in the same spot on the side of the road every day, a spot where the road has a left turn lane and a straight lane. Finally, I'm pedaling along, and I hear the familiar voice scream, Get the heck off the road, jerk! I yelled back, Catch me then, and took off. I was spinning my scrawny little chicken legs as hard as they would go and pegged the throttle. I guess this made the driver even madder because I heard his engine roar as he pursued me. He shifted into the left lane as I stayed in the right. I looked to the side and saw a nasty old man in the driver's seat with the passenger window open. His mouth was going like he was yelling, but I couldn't hear him over the wind noise. I saw the police car spot approaching and started to slow down. Taking the opportunity, the driver swung right in front of me. I don't know if it was the speed or his anger that made him swing wide, but he cut across my lane and crashed straight into the back of the police car. I barely applied my brakes, slowed down to about 15 miles per hour, and crashed into the side of his car. The officer got out. Spitting mad would be an understatement, and called an ambulance and another police car. Everyone was unhurt since the jerk was going only like 25 miles per hour, but there was enough of an impact to trigger the SUV's airbags. The jerk ended up getting arrested for driving drunk, seriously, who drinks before 9 a.m. for an illegal lane change and probably other stuff, too. I don't know all the details. I imagine that causing a crash like that would entail some additional charges. The guy ended up having to pay for extensive repairs on the police cruiser and for a new e-bike to replace the one he destroyed by cutting in front of me, the frame snap. On top of that, I hear that his car was defined as totaled by his insurance company since the airbags went off, so he also has to pay for a new car. With any luck, he'll also lose his license from the drunk driving charges and won't be able to menace cyclists again. So, I work at a candy store at the mall where I live. Today was a really busy day, and we had a long line. A really long line. It was starting to go out the door. But it wasn't out the door during this hour when Kevin arrived. Now, it's a small store, and there were only four people. We had more employees later on. One co-worker was pulling people from the front of the line who just needed to pay so they didn't have to wait for the rest of us who were packaging custom-made candy boxes for those getting candy from the case. I finished packing and gift-wrapping a box for a really nice older lady and cashed her out. She thanked me for helping her and said we were all doing a fantastic job before wishing us a good day and leaving. I love customers like her. It was then that Kevin came up, setting his things down. I knew he hadn't stood in line to pay. I'm sorry, sir, but could you please wait in line? We only have one line. I'm just paying. I don't need anything from the case. I understand that, but there are others who are also waiting to just pay and they've been in line longer. We're pulling customers up from the line as we go. You can even leave your things here so you don't have to hold them if you'd like. But I'm already right here. Just let me pay. That's unfair to the customers who waited very patiently to pay. Like I said, we're pulling customers up as we go along. He then started screaming, calling me all sorts of slurs, so I shrugged it off and just put what he was going to buy away. He kept yelling about how unprofessional we are and that he won't come here again, which was the point of why we took his stuff away. We don't want you here either, buddy. Other customers asked if I was okay, which I replied I was, since I used to be a McDonald's worker. He was pretty mild. 
My store had a blackout a few days ago, a full-on three to four blocks blackout that lasted three hours. My store was affected and the registers and lotto machine were down. We were turning people away unless they needed to use a bathroom. Some were regulars who understood the whole problem because their house was also in the area. Then there was a lady who has an addiction to lotto scratch tickets, LK, Lottery Karen. This lady was known to drop at least $500 in scratches and stay in my store for hours. On this day, my manager decided to lock the front door and used his cell phone to call the district manager. We basically had to keep the doors shut and posted a sign saying no services, which we thought was enough. LK shows as I post the sign and lock the door to wait for district manager to come. She is banging on the door when when I tell her. Power outage. Registers are down. Sorry. Can't you give me a few scratch tickets? I have money. She had literally no concept of this, I guess. Sorry. I can't. Registers are down. She rolls her eyes and starts to talk to me like I am stupid. I have money. I am getting annoyed. Look, I may be learning disabled, but this is not okay. I am not letting you in. Please come back when we have power. I lock the door and go back to moving some items to the drink freight. She continues to bang on the door and I see my manager who tells her to leave. Tell your retard to let me in. I have money. I want to. She is immediately shot down. Didn't she tell you the registers are down? My manager is looking at me and has a rather hard expression. She did, but you can ring it up when the power comes back, right? Manager finally decides to make a final say. We are done. No, you are not getting anything until the power comes back on. About an hour later, the power is back on and the registers are down. We had to call the help center. It took another hour for the registers to be restarted, who shows up LK, banging on the door and pointing on the lights. Power is on. I can buy tickets. My manager and I are now staring at each other. Okay, I am done. He walks outside and decides to tell her to leave. I can hear him say it. You have a problem. You need to get help. Please stop coming here. We are not selling you tickets. She storms off complaining at us about how corporate going to hear about how we treated her. District manager was also in the parking lot as she walked off. He saw the whole thing and said we handled it better than he could have. FYI, our store has three resident scratch-off addicts. Two are sweet as heck and they agreed with our decisions when we cut them off. LK is the one who is rude and doesn't like being told no. To sum it up, our store gets a blackout and LK cannot get it in her head that we can't sell her scratch-off tickets. Then shows how unreasonable she is.